Hi class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in this particular video, we are gonna focus on the second derivative test. So here, what we're really interested in is figuring out what the inflection point is of a given function. So the inflection point is the place in which my graph's concavity changes, either concave up to down, or perhaps concave down to up. And the place at which that changes is our inflection point. And we can use algebra and calculus to help us figure out what that location is. So it turns out for the second derivative test, that's what allows us to figure out the inflection point. So of course we are going to find the derivative of the first derivative, which would be the second derivative of this original function that we have been looking at. So I wanna take the derivative of the first derivative because that will give me my second derivative. And so I just use my power rules to help me term by term figure out the derivative. I have here six X, then minus 12, and then the nine, the derivative of nine is just zero. So we end up with a second derivative f double prime of x is equal to just six x minus 12. Now, just like you saw with the first derivative test, what we are now going to do is set this function, this second derivative equal to zero, because we are looking for where that concavity changes. So in this case, I'm going to let f double prime equal zero, and set that equal to 6x minus 12, and then I will solve this linear equation. I'll just simply add 12 to both sides of the equation, divide by 6, and I will end up with x equals 2, or 2 equals x, however you want to write that. All right, so in this particular case, this tells us that x equals 2 could be a possible inflection point but we need to confirm that it in fact is an inflection point. It is possible, even though you do all of your algebra correct, that this x equals two is kind of a bogus critical value. So at this point, we can only say that it's a possible critical value. So let's confirm that it in fact is a true critical value, AKA the inflection point. So we will go to the sign chart here, just like with the first derivative test we will create our number line, negative infinity to positive infinity, and we will put our two right here on this number line, say in that spot, and we need to pick a value to the left of two and another value to the right of two just to test those values. And again, just like with the first derivative test, we want to know, is that derivative, that second derivative positive or negative in those regions? So I think we'll pick, how about zero for the first test point. So zero does in fact lie in the interval between negative uh, infinity and two. And above two, how about four? All right. So in those particular places, zero and four, I need to figure out if in this region my second derivative is positive or negative and same for this region. So I'll start with the zero. We'll go to the actual second derivative equation and evaluate that equation at zero and see what happens. So we end up with f double prime of zero is equal to six times zero minus 12. Again, we don't really care what the actual value is, just that it is positive or negative. And in this case, we have a value that comes out to be negative. And in what that reveals to us, when I know that the second derivative is in fact negative in a particular region, that reveals to us that in that region, the graph of the original function f of x is in fact concave down. So let's just make a little note to, this, to ourselves about that. This is concave down in this region. Now you can't just leap to the conclusion that the next interval automatically will be positive. Um, they don't always alternate signs. You have to actually truly test this out and confirm. So same with uh, four, we will evaluate the second derivative at four and calculate. Again, don't care about what the actual value is, but we do care about that in, 
It turns out in this case, 24 minus the 12 is in fact still positive. So in this region, we have now confirmed that from two to infinity, my second derivative is in fact positive. What does that tell me about the original function f of x? Well, it tells me that in that region, my graph is concave up. All right, so something interesting happened at two. I went from having a graph of the original function being concave down to suddenly the graph of the original function being concave up, and that change happened at two. So as a result, what do we know about x equals two? Well, this confirms for us that in fact two is an inflection point. It is the place at which I have a change in concavity. So we can note here that x equals two is a, we're gonna say a critical value, and I'm gonna parenthetically say an inflection point. Remember over here I said it was a possible critical value, but here x equals 2 confirmed that it in fact is an actual critical value. It is the inflection point. We'd really like to know what the whole point is, though. x equals 2, we can take that all the way back to the original function to figure out what the output is for that x equals 2 in that function. So we have f of 2 going all the way back to the original function f, f, equal, f of 2 equals uh, 2 cubed minus 6 times 2 squared plus 9 times my 2 plus 5. And now we need to calculate here. We end up with, let's see, f of 2 equals, here we're going to have our 8 minus order of operations. We will square the 2 to get 4 times the negative 6 technically, so minus 24 plus an 18, and then of course plus 5 calculate here. Let's see. I end up, I like to add the positives together first. I have the 8 and the 18 to be 26 plus the 5 to be uh, 31. But over here I had to subtract off 24. So that leaves me with 7 left over. Okay. So in this case, we know now that since x equals 2 is an inflection point, the point, the full point happens to be 2 comma 7. So we'll say we have an inflection point at 2 comma 7. Now, one point to make, no pun intended, one point to make about this is if I go back up to the sign chart, you might be wondering, well, what would happen in the sign chart to make that pretend that two not be a critical value, not be an inflection point. Well, if you ended up in your sign chart, say, with a negative and a negative in those two intervals, or positive and positive, then you had no change in concavity. And so no change in concavity would simply mean that that value is not a critical value. It's not an inflection point. So you actually have to have a change in concavity as evidenced by the sign change that's here. So either a negative to positive or positive to negative, any one of those scenarios would have revealed to us that this value is in fact a critical value. And in this case for the second derivative test is in fact the inflection point. So I hope this series of videos is helpful for you. Thank you for joining us. Please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.